Welcome back guys to my channel. Today what we're going to be talking about is how Laurent Simon just moved to Toronto FC. After a year of being away from Canada where he went on and played in LA and then later moved on midway through the 2018 season to Dijon, a French team, uh, like mid-table French team in Ligue 1, he now returns to Canada, this time playing for Montreal Impact's 401 Derby rivals, Toronto FC. In terms of the quick details of the move, Laurent Simon wanted to leave Dijon, so he terminated his contract and entered the allocation process on a two-year deal with MLS. The way the allocation process works is that MLS signs the player to a certain deal and then says that they're going through the allocation process, so there's like a whole allocation ranking. And basically, teams can make bids, and whatever team has the highest rank in the allocation ranking by the end of the whole process, that team gets the player under that contract. So tr what Toronto FC had to do was they had to trade with San Jose Earthquakes for the second rank in the allocation ranking. So they traded $150,000 worth of allocation money. And most of us Toronto FC fans following this thought that that would be enough. FC Cincinnati, who's number one in the ranking for the allocation ranking, uh, wouldn't bid. So we would end up getting the player. Uh, we were actually a little surprised because then Toronto FC went on to trade uh, FC Cincinnati for the number one rank in the allocation ranking uh, so that they could for sure be able to sign Laurent Simon. Laurent Simon could come back to Canada. Anyway, in terms of what he means to Toronto FC is that he gives us a lot more depth in the back line. Toronto FC could revert back to a four at the back formation for for the 2019 season. They tried to do that 2018 season. They weren't that successful with it, though that's because we had a lot of injuries. So at times we had to play Michael Bradley in defense, but it's always good to get more center back depth as we're also in the 2019 Champions League. And last year, as I was, as I was saying, we had a lot of injuries in 2018. So hopefully if we start getting a few injuries here and there, he'll act as a bit of depth so that we don't struggle as much as we did last season if we start getting a ton of injuries. Also, with getting Laurent Simon, now it gives us the amount of versatility so that we could choose between going four at the back or going three at the back with three center backs. He's a solid defender who should be a replacement for Drew Moore. Drew Moore, I believe, was offered a contract with Toronto FC, should be re-signing for next season. But Drew Moore, looked like whenever he played for Toronto FC last se season, he didn't look as great as the 2017 season. There was a sharp decline for him. Even though he still was a good defender last year, when he played, um, he did, didn't did look the type of player he was in our MLS Cup winning year. Basically, this whole move by the front office also tells you that Toronto FC's front office is looking to the next few years they want Toronto FC to be as good as they can for the next one or two years and hopefully they'll be able to win CONCACAF Champions League. They're not necessarily looking too far into the future. I don't think there is necessarily too big of a plan for like next five years or something crazy like that. So you might want to consider that as Toronto FC is signing a 33 year old Belgian international. Um, they're bringing in a lot of quality, but they're not necessarily looking as much to the future as perhaps we may have liked. Of course, we can't ignore the aspect that Laurent Simon is going to be adding a lot of a different aspect to the 401 Derby. As, as I said before, he played for Montreal Impact. He was a designated player center back, one of the best defenders in MLS. One thing to note is that he's more of a risk taker and is very mobile, likes to run around all over the place. So sometimes he might not have the best positioning, which could cost Toronto FC goals. It cost Montreal Impact goals uh, with them doing that, cost LAFC goals, but it also may have saved them in other places too at times. And as a result, sometimes he would score for Montreal Impact and LAFC, but sometimes it would actually screw up their defense a little bit. Uh, but overall, I think the, the type of quality that he brings to the team is going to improve any MLS defense. So I think you always have to consider that. But I think 
the aspect that he's more of a risk taker and is more mobile, even at the age of 33, might be a consideration for Greg Vanny to play a three at the back formation for most of the time when he's playing. Because I think perhaps he might be able to uh, be a more valuable asset under a three at the back formation where he's got two other center backs to rely on if he screws up. Another downfall of his playing style is that I find he can be a little reckless at times. I noticed this during the 401 derby whenever he would play for Montreal Impact. He always seemed to be like tripping us or like he would concede a lot of penalties and get yellow cards, red cards, and sometimes it seemed a little unnecessary, which I think we'll have to watch to see if he does that with Toronto in the 2019 season. I'm a little worried about that. So I'm going to leave it to you guys to decide if this is a good trade. It's certainly an interesting one as a player who was playing for our rivals, was a fan favorite for the amongst their rivals, is now moving to Toronto FC. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes over with the fans. Uh, let me know your opinion on this trade in the comments down below. So on a bit of another note, if you did enjoy this video, please like it. If you want to see more content from me, uh, I've, I've been uploading once a week about MLS or the Canadian Premier League. Well, I've only made one video on the Canadian Premier League. Please subscribe. I'm, I think I'm going to be looking to upload a bit more about the Canadian Premier League more over time. Uh, and then, of course, as the 2019 MLS season starts, I'm going to be uploading as well about Toronto FC and just in general about MLS. So please subscribe if you want to see more content from me. And until next time, see ya.